So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depends on where you are in, in the world. So thank you again to join us for this uh, very exciting talk today that will be done by Professor Eduardo Lima from Federal University of Paraná in Brazil, talking about numerical methods for nonlinear RF circuits analysis. And we have also here today the pleasure to have uh, Felipe Baumgartz as the session chair. So Felipe is now working with uh, Shippus in uh, the wonderful city of uh, Florianópolis in the state of Santa Catarina. So uh, thank you very much, you both, for accepting our invitation. So I give the floor to Felipe Baumgratz, that will be the session chair uh, today. So, Felipe, the floor is with you. Thank you, Reis. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. And now let's start introducing uh, Professor Eduardo. Uh, Professor Eduardo has received his bachelor degree in electrical engineering from Politecnico di Torino, Italy, and from Universidad de Campinas in Campinas, Brazil. He received the PhD degree in electronic device from Politecnico di Torino in 2009. He was visiting research researcher at the Instituto de Telecomunicações, uh, Universidade de Aveiro in 2007 and 2008. He is currently uh, uh, an associated professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering at the Federal University of Paraná. His research interests are digital baseband predistortion of microwave power amplifiers and nonlinear circuit analysis and modeling. So now I pass the word to Professor Eduardo. First of all, I'd like to thank Professor Ricardo Reis for the invitation. Thank you, Felipe, for the introduction. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, so, uh, are you seeing these slides? Please, Felipe, Ricardo. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Felipe. So, this is the agenda of my presentation. First, we are going to revise some base concept in circuits. Then we're going to talk about the main nonlinear analysis for radio frequency circuits, including periodic steady state, including multitone large signal analysis, and envelope methods. Finally, a summary will be presented. Let's start with some basic concepts in circuits. Circuits have ports. A port in a circuit is a pair of terminals with a constraint. The current that enters the circuit by one terminal must be equal to the current that leaves the circuit by the other terminal. Each port has two variables, one voltage and one current. There is no distinction between ports. The energy can propagate in both directions. In a true port, the circuit is characterized by a set of two independent equations that manipulates voltages and currents in both ports. If the circuit is linear, there are four parameters. These parameters are related to direct gain, reverse gain, input and output impedances. In a system, signals play the role of ports. Each port is represented by a signal. Signals are classified as input and output. So, in a system, the data flows in only one direction, always from input to output. In a block with one input and one output, the system is represented by one equation that maps the output signal as a function of the input signal. If the system is linear, there is only one parameter. This parameter is related to direct gain. In other words, it is assumed no reverse gain and perfect input and output matching. Both circuit analysis and circuit synthesis can be performed. The analysis is performed in a known circuit. The unknowns of the analysis are voltages and currents. In a synthesis, at least one circuit parameter is not known. For instance, the resistance of a resistor or the capacitance of a capacitor. Circuit simulators can perform a large number of analyses. To change the 
the value of parameters from one analysis to another analysis, circuit simulators offer the designer uh, tools as sweep, optimization, and sensibility. To perform uh, the analysis of a circuit, the required knowledge includes the circuit schematic, showing how the different elements are interconnected among them, uh, the equivalent circuits using only bipoles for elements with more than two terminals, the constitutive equations relating currents and voltages in bipoles, and the numeric values for the parameters used in the bipolar equations. When performing a circuit analysis, uh, the steps are, first, replace each bipolar equation with derivatives by algebraic equations. This must be done for capacitors and inductors. Second, obtain a system of algebraic equations in which the number of unknowns is equal to the number of independent equations. Third, solve the system of algebraic equations. If the system is linear, analytical solutions can be obtained. However, if the circuit is nonlinear, the system is also nonlinear, and only numerical solutions can be found. To obtain the system of algebraic equations in which the number of unknowns is equal to the number of independent equations, the modified nodal analysis can be used. In the modified nodal analysis, the unknowns are nodal voltages and current on voltage sources. To obtain the system of independent equations, the Kirchhoff's current law is applied once in non-reference nodes, and the constitutive equation of voltage sources are also used. General results in circuit analysis. Voltage and currents vary continuously in time. Voltages and currents can be written as the sum of two responses, the transient response and the steady state response. In the steady state, sorry, in the transient response, uh, the initial conditions are important, and the initial conditions are given by capacitor voltages and inductor currents. Uh, in the steady state response, the time dependence is uh, dictated by independent sources. In stable circuits, the magnitude of the transient analysis uh, response reduces as time increases. Analog circuit simulators are suitable for low frequency circuits. In radio frequency circuits or simple RF circuits, the high frequencies used put a lot of challenges in the traditional transient analysis that is largely adopted in analog circuit simulators. Because of this, circuit simulators dedicated to the, to the design of RF circuits offer the designers a set of tools to handle the particularities of RF circuits. This talk will discuss about, about the main nonlinear analysis to handle the specific, specificities of radio frequencies circuits. Periodic steady state. The simplest nonlinear circuit analysis is the so called large signal one tone analysis. In large signal analysis, the transient response is neglected. In other words, initial conditions are not used in large signal analysis. In large signal analysis, the independent sources are constrained to be DC stimuli, which are constant in time, and AC stimuli, which are sinusoidal in time at a fundamental frequency. At large signal operation, no negligible harmonics are generated. In this slide, it is show uh, results, general results in large signal analysis. In the left, it is show a typical waveform of a voltage or current in large signal analysis. It shows a fundamental period with visible harmonics. In the right, uh, we have the amplitude frequency response of such waveform. Observe there are no new components only at zero frequency, 
at fundamental frequency omega c and at multiples or harmonics of the fundamental frequency. The time domain voltage or current in large signal analysis can be written as shown below. In particular, it can be written as the sum of a constant DC value and uh, sinus with constant amplitudes and constant phases at fundamental and harmonics. In analog circuit simulators, the, uh, the large signal analysis is performed by the transient analysis. In transient analysis, voltages and currents are uniformly sampled in time. The user must set the simulation initial time, T0, the simulation time step, Ts, and the simulation final time, Tf. In transient analysis, uh, equations with derivatives are replaced by algebraic ones by using a method of numerical integration. In this slide, it is shown an example of how to uh, uh, how to use the trapezoidal rule in the capacitor differential equation. To that purpose, first, the capacitor differential equation is rearranged in the, uh, in the integral form. Then, the integral of the capacitor current from time t0 to time t, or time tn to time tn plus 1, is approximated by the area of a trapezoid, as circle in red. In transient analysis, there is a, a superior bound for the value of the time step. Uh, this superior bound is given by the Nyquist criterion. In particular, the sampling frequency, Fs, which is the inverse of the time step, Ts, must be set at least two times larger than the maximum frequency observed in voltages and currents. In this slide, it is shown a uh, amplitude frequency response of a signal in which the harmonics of order larger than four are neglected. In this way, the maximum frequency is four times Fc, and so the sampling frequency must be set to at least 80 times the fundamental frequency Fc. Uh, large signal analysis does not care about the transient response. In other words, uh, large signal analysis does not use any simulation data for, uh, provided by the transient analysis between the initial simulation time, T0, up to the time, Tx, in which the steady state is reached. In other words, most of the data simulated by transient analysis are useless for large signal analysis. In this slide, we have two examples of waveforms in which the time required to reach the steady state is much larger than the fundamental period, Tc. Uh, the waveform shown below has a longer time to, uh, to reach the steady state. In radio frequency circuits, the use of the transient analysis to perform the large signal analysis is not recommended. This happens because, first, the time step is usually very low on the order of nanoseconds because the frequencies are very high on the gigahertz range. Second, the time required to reach the steady state Tx can be very large on the milliseconds range which is several orders larger than Ts. Because of this, circuit simulators dedicated to the design of RF circuits performs the large signal analysis by the so-called periodic steady state, or simple PSS. PSS computes directly the steady state. In other words, PSS neglects the transient response. PSS can be implemented in time domain by the shooting method or in the frequency domain by the harmonic balance. Harmonic balance. Harmonic balance, or simple HB, 
is a nonlinear circuit analysis. Harmonic balance neglects transient response, so it does not use initial conditions. Harmonic balance is a frequency domain analysis in which the unknowns are constant DC values and constant amplitudes of sinus and cosinus at fundamental and harmonics up to the order capital A. In harmonic balance, the independent sources are constrained to be DC stimuli and AC stimuli with a fundamental period FC. To perform a harmonic balance analysis, the steps are first, replace each equation in time domain by a set of two capital A plus one independent equations in the frequency domain in which capital H is the number of considered harmonics. Second, obtain a system of algebraic equations in which the number of unknowns and independent equations uh, is two capital H plus one times larger than the system in transient analysis. Third, solve only once the system of nonlinear algebraic equations. In this slide, it is show an example of how to replace one time domain linear algebraic equation into a set of two capital eight plus one independent algebraic equations in the frequency domain. In a resistor, the voltage at time t is given by the product of a constant resistance R and the current at the same time t. Voltages and currents can be written as the sum of a DC constant value plus sinus and cosinus with constant amplitudes at fundamental and harmonics up to the order capital H. To comply with Ohm's law at all time, a set of two capital H plus one independent equations in the frequency domain must be satisfied at uh, simultaneously. Uh, it can be shown that the vector of constant voltage amplitudes is related to the vector of constant current amplitudes by a diagonal matrix. In this diagonal matrix, the diagonal elements are equal to the resistance R of the resistor. In this slide, it is shown how to replace one linear differential equation in time domain into a set of two capital H plus one independent algebraic equations in the frequency domain. In a capacitor, the current at time t is equal to a constant capacitance C uh, times the time derivative of the capacitor voltage at the same time t. Once again, voltages and currents can be written as the sum of DC constant values plus sinus and cosinus with constant amplitudes at fundamental and harmonics. To comply with the capacitor differential equation at all time, once again, we need to simultaneously satisfy a system of two capital eight plus one independent equations in the frequency domain, in which the unknowns are constant amplitudes of voltages and currents. Uh, in this slide, it will show how the uh, vector of current constant values is related to the vector of voltage constant amplitudes in a capacitor. Uh, in this matrix, observe that the first line is composed of only zero, which means that the capacitor DC current is always zero. Uh, it can also be noted that for each frequency, fundamental and harmonics, the sinus amplitudes of current is related to the cosine amplitudes of voltages. And the cosine amplitudes of currents is related to the sine amplitudes of voltages. The non-null elements are near the diagonal. In this slide, it shows how to replace one nonlinear time domain equation into a set of two capital eight plus one independent equations in the frequency domain. In a diode, the current at time t is nonlinearly related 
to the voltage at the same time t, in which FNL stands for a nonlinearity. Once again, voltages and currents can be given by the sum of a constant value plus sinus and cosinus with constant amplitudes at fundamental and harmonics up to the order capital H. To obtain a system of two capital H plus one independent equations that manipulates the amplitudes of sinus and cosinus of voltages and currents. First, the fundamental period is divided in two capital H plus one equally spaced intervals. In this slide, it is shown how the fundamental period TC is divided into five equally spaced intervals. Then, the nonlinearity is evaluated in time domain in each one of the two capital H plus one time instants equally spaced in one fundamental period. In doing that, it can be shown that the vector of current constant amplitudes is nonlinearly related to the vector of constant voltage amplitudes. At this point, a numerical example is used to illustrate uh, the transient versus harmonic balancing in performing a large signal analysis. In this example, uh, it is used a circuit of a power amplifier for wireless communications. The fundamental frequency is set to 0.9 gigahertz. It is also assumed that the harmonics of order larger than 16 can be neglected, which means that the maximum frequency of voltages and currents is equal to 14.4 gigahertz. If a transient analysis is performed, the sampling frequency must be set equal to at least 28.8 gigahertz, which is equivalent to a time step of about 35 picoseconds. Still in transient analysis, the initial simulation time is arbitrarily set, in this case to T0 equals 0, and the simulation final time is also arbitrarily set, in this case to Tf equals approximately 200 nanoseconds. Uh, with this setup, uh, the number of samples to be simulated in the transient analysis is uh, 5,760 samples. In the harmonic balance, uh, the number of harmonics, harmonics to be considered is set to 16. In this slide, uh, it is shown results from the transient analysis. In particular, it shows uh, waveforms of input power in blue and output power in red. Observe that the time, the time required to reach the steady stage is much larger than the fundamental period. Large signal analysis does not use the transient results from the initial simulation time up to the point in which the steady stage is reached. In this slide, uh, it is shown about three fundamental periods after which the steady state has been reached uh, using the transient analysis results. Uh, the large signal analysis will use only, only, one, uh, only the results from one fundamental period after which the steady state has been reached. In this slide, we have the harmonic balance results. In particular, it shows the frequency response of input power in blue and output power in red. Observe there are no new components, only at this, the, the frequency zero, at fundamental frequency, and harmonic frequency, uh, frequencies up to the order 16. Uh, in other words, the harmonic balance Pro, uh, computes only the results that are useful for light signal analysis. Because of this, harmonic balance is much more efficient than transient to perform large signal analysis. Shooting method. 
The periodic state stage can also be implemented in time domain by the so-called shooting method. The shooting method is a nonlinear circuit analysis. Still, uh, it is required that the independent sources are given by DC stimuli and AC stimuli at a fundamental frequency. The shooting method computes only steady state response. More specifically, shooting methods search for the initial conditions that produces a new transient response. To produce a new transient response, the shooting method imposes a steady state condition. Let XQ be a state variable representing a capacitor voltage or an inductor current. The steady state condition imposes for each one of the capital Q state variables that its value at the initial simulation time, T0, must be equal to its value after exactly one fundamental period, Tc, which is the inverse of the fundamental frequency. To compute the values of the state variables after exactly one fundamental period, the shooting method performs a transient analysis with a fixed duration. In such transient analysis, the initial conditions at time T0 are available. The time step must be set to a value that comply with the Nyquist criterion and take in, into consideration all the desired harmonics of the fundamental frequency. The final time of the transient analysis is always T0 plus Tc, which means that the transient has a duration always exactly to the fundamental period Tc. In summary, the shooting mass has as a known announce the values of the state variables at the initial simulation time T0. For each one of the capital Q state variables, uh, a system of capital Q independent equations is obtained by imposing once the state state condition for each one of the state variables. Uh, such nonlinear algebraic system of equations can be solved numerically, for instance, by the newton raphson method. At each iteration of such numerical algorithm, a transient analysis is performed, but is a transient analysis with a fixed duration equal to the fundamental period Tc. Let's change now to the multi-tone large signal analysis. The original harmonic balance and original shooting method can also be used uh, to perform large signal analysis under multi-tone stimuli. In this case, a bit frequency is firstly obtained. The bit frequency plays the role of the fundamental frequency. In particular, the bit frequency is the highest frequency that has all tone frequencies as its harmonics. As a numerical example, in a two-tone case uh, with tone frequencies F1 equal to 1 gigahertz and F2 equal to 1.1 gigahertz, the bit frequency FB is equal to 0.1 gigahertz. In this case, the tone frequency F1 is the harmonic number 10 of the bit frequency and the tone the frequency F2 is the harmonic number 11 of the bit frequency. However, if the tone frequencies are close to each other, the bit frequency is very low, and the number of harmonics to be considered in the harmonic balance or shooting method can be very large. In this case, the alternatives are harmonic balance with artificial frequency mapping, periodic AC, or simple PAC, and quasi-periodic steady state, or simple QPSS. In this slide, the harmonic balance with artificial frequency map is illustrated in the two-tone case. Given two tones at frequencies F1 and F2, uh, the non-null frequencies 
is given to the linear combination between F1 and F2, in which M and N can be equal to zero or can be equal to plus uh, inter, uh, positive or negative integers numbers. For example, if N is set to zero, we have the harmonics of F1. Uh, if M is set equal to zero, we have the harmonics of F2. If M and N are simultaneously different from zero, we have the intermodulation products between F1 and F2. Uh, observe that the frequencies in the two-tone case are not equally spaced in frequency. As a numerical example, if you have tones at F1 equal 1 gigahertz and F2 equal 1.1 gigahertz, there are no new components only at the zero frequency, at frequency F2 minus F1 equal to 0 0.1 gigahertz, at frequency F1 equal 1 gigahertz, at frequency F2 equal 1.1 gigahertz, at frequency F1 plus F2 equal 2.1 gigahertz, and so on. The harmonic balance with artificial mapping search for a unique artificial frequency that maps uniformly in frequency the two tones frequencies. When, the, when such artificial frequency is used, the number of harmonics to be used in the harmonic balancing is exactly equal to the number of non-null frequencies in the two-tone case. Uh, in comparison with the uh, beach frequency, uh, a, a very significant reduction in the number of harmonics to be used in the harmonic balance is observed by the use of the artificial frequency. Periodic AC, or simple PAC. Uh, PAC linearizes the circuit around a one-tone large signal analysis. The influences of the remaining uh, tones are obtained only in the linearized circuit. Because of that, PAC is accurate only if the amplitudes of the remaining tones are small. Uh, to exemplify, uh, exemplify the PAC in a two-tone case, let F1 and F2 be the uh, tone frequencies. Uh, PAC assumes, assumes there are no new components only at harmonics of F1 and only in the intermodulation products between F1 and F2, in which F2 is used only once. In other words, PAC neglects the harmonics of F2 and the intermodulation products in which F2 is used more than once. In PAC, voltages and currents are known at all times. Quasi-periodic steady state, or simple QPSS. In QPSS, there is no linearization. This means that QPSS is always accurate for all tone amplitudes. However, in QPSS, voltages and currents are not known at all time. In QPSS, voltages and currents are calculated only at time instants that are equally spaced in time. Uh, in the two-tone case, at frequencies F1 and F2, in which the lower frequency is F1 and the higher frequency is F2, uh, the QPSS rearranges the time domain equations in a way that sines and cosines have frequencies uh, related to F1, the lower frequency tone. Sines and cosines now have amplitudes that vary, uh, vary periodically in time uh, with, the with a frequency given by the higher tone frequency, in this case F2. In QPSS, the amplitudes of such sines and cosines are obtained only for time instants that are integer multiples 
of the fundamental period of the higher tone frequency, which is F2 in this case. Let us now move to the envelope methods. Envelope analysis is a nonlinear circuit analysis largely used in RF circuits. In an envelope analysis, the independent sources are constrained to be a narrow band or a pass band stimuli. In the upper figure of this slide, it is shown the amplitude frequency response of such narrow band or band pass stimuli. Observe that the center frequency omega c or fc is much larger than the signal bandwidth bw. Usually, bw is on the order of megahertz, while omega c is on the order of gigahertz. Because the uh, spectrum is continuous, uh, it can be shown that the stimuli is not periodic in time. Also shown in this slide, in the lower figure, it is the amplitude frequency response when such narrowband signal is subject, subjected to the action of a third order nonlinearity. Observe that the uh, bandwidth around the fundamental frequency omega c is increased by three times. It can be also noted that uh, the, uh, that are generated no new components around three times omega c with a bandwidth of about three times bw. The time domain equation of an error band or band pass stimuli can be written as shown below. In particular, the narrow band or band pass stimuli can be seen as a carrier at omega c, modulated by a time varying amplitude capital X A and a time varying phase theta E. In summary, realistic RF circuits are given by carrier modulated in amplitude in phase by complex pairing envelopes. Usually, the uh, carrier frequency is much larger than the envelope bandwidth. PSS cannot be employed in this case because the stimuli is non-periodic in time. Moreover, transient analysis is not efficient to perform such kind of analysis because in transient analysis, the samples are equally spaced in frequency. In this slide, it is shown a numerical example to illustrate that the transient analysis is not efficient, efficient to perform a, an envelope analysis. In this case, it is used a signal with a bandwidth BW of 10 MHz. The fundamental frequency or carrier frequency is assumed equal to 1 GHz. It is also assumed that the maximum frequency is 3.015 GHz. In other words, it assumes the presence of only third order harmonics. In a transient analysis, to comply with the Nyquist criterion, the sampling frequency must be set equal to at least uh, 6.03 GHz. In the transient analysis, the number of samples to be simulated is given by the ratio between the sampling frequency Fs and the desired frequency resolution, delta F. In case of, of a frequency resolution equal to 100 kilohertz, uh, using the minimum sampling frequency, the number of samples to be simulated is about 60,000 samples. It can be shown uh, and can be seen by this picture that the number of samples in frequency domain that are different from zero is only a small amount of this total. In particular, in this case, only 1,200 samples are different from zero. Uh, they correspond to less than 2% of the total of simulated samples. In summary, 
Uh, envelope methods are dedicated to this case, to this kind of analysis, in which the stimuli are band pairs. In particular, envelope methods exploit such band pairs characteristics of the stimuli. Uh, they calculate the frequency samples that are non known In other words, uh, they do not calculate the, uh, the frequency samples that you know before that, are, that they are known. Because of that, envelope methods are much more efficient than transient analysis to perform a circuit simulation in which the stimuli is given by an envelope. Envelope methods combine frequency and time domains. There are two ways to implement an uh, envelope method. There is a harmonic balance based envelope method, which is known in literature as circuit envelope. And there is also a shooting method based envelope method that is known in literature as envelope following. Circuit envelope. In this slide, it is shown a typical waveform of a voltage or current in envelope analysis. Uh, in particular, we have a fastly varying periodic carrier modulated by a slowly varying non-periodic envelope. The circuit envelope combines a transient analysis for the non-periodic slowly varying signal and the harmonic balance for the periodic fastly varying carrier. Uh, in the circuit envelope, first of all, the time is, uh, is uniformly sampled according to the baseband signal. In this slide, we have, the, we have the time being sampled at T1, T2, and so on. For each one of the baseband time samples, T1, T2, and so on, a harmonic balance is first implemented. In doing that, we have phasors around fundamental and harmonic frequencies, and uh, such phasors vary slowly in time. Each phasor can be individually mapped to the frequency domain. In this slide, the phasor around the fundamental frequency is mapped to the frequency domain. Because the phasor varies slowly in time, its frequency response covers a continuous spectrum around its center frequency. In this slide, we show a numerical example to compare the circuit envelope and transient analysis in particular, we use a circuit of a power amplifier dedicated to wireless communications, in which the carrier is set to 0.9 gigahertz, and the envelope signal is a WCDMA with a bandwidth of about 4 megahertz. Once again, it is assumed that the maximum number of harmonics to be considered is equal to 16, which means that the maximum frequency is about 14.4 gigahertz. If a transient analysis is used to perform the envelope analysis, the sampling frequency must be set equal to at least about 28.8 gigahertz. If a frequency resolution of 30 kilohertz is desired, desired, then the number of samples to be simulated is about 1 million. To provide the same frequency resolution, but using circuit envelope, the number of samples to be simulated is reduced drastically to only 2,048 samples. In this slide, it shows results uh, using the circuit envelope in particular, it shows the uh, frequency response 
of input power in red and output power in blue. Observe that the nonlinearities present in the circuit under analysis uh, makes the bandwidth width becomes larger than the input bandwidth. Envelope following. Né? Envelope method uh, can also be implemented in uh, using this envelope following. The envelope following is a method based on the shooting method. In particular, for each base bond time sample, a modified shooting method is performed. In such modified shooting methods, the number of unknowns is doubled in relation to the original shooting method. This happens because now the state variables uh, have values that change between consecutive time samples. The base bond time sample is set as a multiple of the carrier fundamental period, which is called capital T in this slide, and C is a positive integer. For each one of the capital Q state variables, two conditions are imposed by the envelope following. In this slide, it is shown the first condition imposed by the envelope following. Uh, the values of XQ at times MTS and time MTS minus capital T are, uh, are the unknowns of the envelope following. The first condition imposed by the envelope following imposes that the unknown at time MTS must be equal to its value obtained from a transient analysis that starts at time MTS minus capital T and that have a duration exactly equal to capital T. In such transient analysis, the initial conditions at time MTS minus capital T are available. The time step must be set very low uh, to a value very low to take into account all the desired harmonics of the uh, carrier frequency. And the final simulation time is always equal to MTS. The second condition imposed by the envelope following is shown in this slide. Once again, the values of XQ at times MTS and time MTS minus capital T are the unknowns of the envelope following. The value of XQ at time TS multiplied by M minus one is, uh, is available from previous, previous sample. The second condition imposed by the envelope following uh, assumes that the state variables vary uniformly in time. In other words, it assumes that the variation of the state variables in one capital, uh, in one period capital T, uh, is multiplied by C, a constant C, a, a integer constant C, to obtain its variation after exactly C periods of duration capital T. Summary. So in this talk, we have addressed uh, nonlinear analysis to handle the particularities of radio frequency circuits. Uh, we have discussed the use of harmonic bands in shooting methods to perform the uh, large signal Unton analysis. We have briefly commented about how to implement uh, multi-tone large signal analysis using bit frequency, artificial frequency, PAC and QPSS. We have also talked about uh, envelope methods, uh, including circuit envelope and envelope following. That's the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Professor Eduardo. Now we go for the questions. Please, if anyone, anyone has questions, uh, place in the chat box. Uh, so I start with my questions. My questions are more from the design point of view. Uh, my first kind of a curiosity. Uh, I heard about uh, some old school designers, guys, that 
start to sign circuit, circuit circuit demo in the 80s or even later, uh, older than that, uh, they don't, they only trust transient analysis for RF design. Why is that mistrust uh, about uh, large signal analysis? Oh, oh that, that's, that's an interesting question because uh, uh, most of the designers does not know about the, those specific simulation environments for radio frequency systems. Um, uh, what I can say is that uh, if if you are doing a transient analysis to design a, an RF circuit and you can wait for the transient analysis, <laughs> you need to do that. Oh. But if you have uh, an analysis that you take several days to perform, and it, it's not uh, it's common to have cases like that, uh, uh, I think it, uh, the people are uh, must go to this kind of simulation that is more specific to RF circuits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, I have a second question. Uh, is that, is there, uh, ah, it's kind of answering the first one, but uh, is there any kind of any circuit that say, okay, in that circuit we can, you should not use uh, large signal analysis uh, because it would not be uh, precise or Sufficient precise. Is there any secret you work like that? You need to go for transient. Uh, uh, no, uh, oh, uh, large signal lines are always accurate. Uh, sometimes you need to use a lot of harmonics to have an accurate result. Mm -hmm. But uh, harmonic balance and the shooting mass are always accurate. Uh, uh, when you're doing a design at the beginning, you use uh, use stimuli that are very simple, like one tone and multi tone signal. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the design, uh, uh, you can mm -hmm. use the harmonic balance and shoot method. But when you are finishing the design, and it's very common to design RF secrets to communication systems, mm -hmm. so it's desired to uh, desirable to uh, uh, test your circuit by simulation using a more realistic mm -hmm. signal. In this case, you can go to the envelope methods or to the transient methods, but the transient will be much more expensive yeah. when uh, uh, when using to uh, 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 a carrier stimuli than to tone stimuli. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go for the other people question. Uh, Mehmet Tzit uh, said that he's surprised that there are just two methods. What's the reason? This question okay uh i just show you two methods one if uh, uh, let, let us talk to the large signal uh, uh, that that remain the discussion in the large signal case i just show two cases one from time domain and one for frequency domain and i call the frequency domain harmonic balance in the time domain shooting method but there is a lot of variations of the harmonic balance so uh, uh, i cannot affirm you that is only one on two methods. So it's more like there are a lot of methods and you can combine some of them in the time domain, which I call here shooting method, and uh, others that can that are done in frequency domain that are called harmonic balance. And the same is valid for the envelope methods. So there are there are uh, variations of these two basic that I showed them. One is harmonic balance based and one is shooting method based. But there are variations from uh, uh, the two kind of, uh, the two domain simulations. Mm -hmm. Another question um, from Elias Ramos. Is there any work in the literature on this top using dynamical system chaos theory? Uh, okay, uh, no, so, so, uh, this kind of circuit analysis are not used for, for chaotic systems. Um, uh, uh, these kind of, of simulations are useful for, for systems in which you are not worried about the, uh, uh, the transient, uh, transient response. So uh, in chaos theory, uh, the, the transient response can be anywhere. So I'll say that uh, those kind of simulations are more, uh, are more useful for circuits that behave more uh, I'll say more fair 
uh, in which we are uh, we have stable circuits and we are uh, interested only in the in the uh, in the uh, state state regime uh, even in the envelope methods we assume that we are in state state for the carrier the carrier uh, uh, signal uh, question from arturo sarmiento hayes are any of these methods coded with circuit simulation with a circuit simulation program okay uh, if you use the cadence, uh, you have the, the both Schutte method and harmonic balance. Uh, but you have, uh, as, as, as far as I, I, my knowledge goes, I think the cadence does not have the harmonic balance with artificial frequency mapping. But cadence have all the other algorithms that I, that I have talk, talked. Uh, the ADS from Kistite, uh, usually use only the harmonic balance and they do not use the shooting method. Uh, this circuit envelope was originally uh, developed by, by the, the ADS as a, as a patent. So uh, uh, they prefer to use the, the, uh, the frequency domain methods. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think that one was the last question. Uh, also, we are on time. <laughs> So I thank you, Professor Eduardo, for the nice, this nice talk. And I give the word to Professor Hayes. If you want to say a final word? Thank you. So thank you very much, Eduardo and Felipe. So Eduardo, it was a very interesting talk. So today we had here an audience also, including people from Mexico as Arturo, from Switzerland, from USA, from Mozambique, and the uh, USA, as I already told you. So thank you for all the audience to attend this talk today.